In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a heating system like a true professional. If you ever wondered how a select small group of installers is able to continuously outperform all the other installations, the answer is those guys understand what's called a system design. But what is it? What, what, what does it actually mean? What's involved in the system design? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly that. I'm going to show you what's involved in the system design and what skills you need to master to be able to join that 1% of top installers and achieve exceptional efficiencies on your own installations. The concepts will be explained within the context of an actual installation that we completed uh, last week. It's a retrofit of a heat pump to a four bedroom house with open plan kitchen, separate living room, a separate playroom, piano room, and also additional office, so a large family home. So this is existing plant room in the loft. We have a 37 kilowatt system boiler, and all the pipe work to the radiators has been run through the loft so we can upgrade it easily because they've run it all on 15 mil packs. We've got 22 mil plastic pipe work also going all the way down to two underfloor heating manifolds on the uh, ground floor. They come from the loft down here within the uh, partition wall to 22 mil plastic pipes. Let me show you what they do on the floor below. So that's the cloak room and they come down across the ceiling and then right here and across to the area under the stairs. Every heating design, doesn't matter of the heat source, boilers or heat pumps, starts with heat loss calculations. This is what everything else will be built upon. You need to learn how to correctly do the heat loss calculations and also how to interpret that data once you've got it calculated. Based on heat loss, you're gonna size your heat pump. Based on heat loss, you're gonna uh, size your emitters, you're gonna design your underfloor heating, uh, you're gonna size your pipe work as well. You get the heat loss wrong, all of those items will be wrong as well and you won't be able to achieve a good performing system. I use heat engineer software for heat loss. So basically uh, you use an app on a phone, you measure the property, you type your information into the phone, it sends that information to the cloud, then you go to the desktop, and you finalize your calculations on the desktop. So once you've done your heat loss, you've used heat engineer, you measure the property, you know what the heat loss is, trust your results. Because two other companies on this job, they both said that this house needs a twin fan unit, 12 or 16 kilowatts. When they heard that we were installing seven kilowatts unit, they said, no way, this is not gonna work. Which simply tells me they either don't do heat loss don't know how to do heat loss, or they do heat loss and then ignore the results. It's a psychology of, look, it's a big house, it's need, it needs a big heat pump. This is side of the house where we are planning to put our Valent R290 heat pump, which is a bit problematic because this air conditioning unit is, is pretty much where I want my heat pump. So what do we have to do? We're gonna shift this aircon unit up by uh, 1.5 meters and install our heat pump below the aircon unit. So today we've got Sam with us from SPS Cooling Solutions moving the unit for us. It will go on this bracket uh, because we can't put uh, a propane heat pump above uh, the air conditioning units because of the safety zones. So we have to move this unit up. It's R32 so it can be above our heat pump. So it's all done, yeah? We're running. Yeah, unit's all running. Put the covers back on. Lovely jubbly. And this is my bespoke cylinder from Newark. Why bespoke? Because it's made to this specific job, made specifically to go through the hatch or actually not go through the hatch. We have to remove the hatch. It will go between the timbers that hold the hatch in place. So the widest we could get because it's going into an unheated space. So it needs thicker 75 millimeters insulation. Also has a larger coil. It's four square meters surface area on the coil. Why not six? We just don't have enough space because the height of the cylinder is also the highest that will fit within the loft space that we have available. So we had to demolish a little bit more of that opening. Sorry, homeowners. Yes!
So we are getting close to uh, completing our plant room in the loft. We also replaced all the pipe work for radiators that used to be uh, 15 millimeters push fit plastic pipe work. Uh, and we also uh, upgraded pipe work going to underfloor heating downstairs. We've got 32 mil MLCP going here. Now, how do I know we needed those upgrades? We calculate what's called pressure loss. And if you're interested in calculations uh, for this job, I'm gonna post uh, my calculations with drawings, pipe work layout with everything that I do for, for my projects in the description of this video. So you can download those files have a look at the pipe runs, have a look at the calculations of pressure loss. So to give you an idea, we've got 28 millimeter pipe work going from the heat pump 4.5 meters up, then around 12 meters going here. And we obviously have to calculate flow and return, so add them together. And we also have calculate pressure losses through things like heat meters, strainers, diverter valves. And how do we calculate those? There is something called KV value and that KV value allows us to reverse engineer the pressure drop across uh, valves and fittings. For example, this is a high flow diverter valve uh, KV value of 12.8. What does that figure mean? It means that at 12.8 cubic meters of flow of water, we're going to get a pressure drop of one bar. We're not putting a uh, 12.8 cubic meters. We're putting one tenth of it on, on this application. So there will be about 1,275 liters per hour going through this valve, which equals to 1.28 cubic meters. And at that flow, uh, we can reverse engineer the uh, pressure loss or calculate the pressure loss knowing the KV value. The pressure loss through that valve at our flow on this system is only one kilopascal. And we add all of those up together and we need to make sure that we've got enough available pressure in the pump outside to overcome the resistance of the circuit, something called index circuit. So that would be part of the system that's the most restrictive. In our case, our most restrictive circuit is actually underfloor heating downstairs. So what do we do? We calculate full load of 7.4 kilowatts going through the pipe work from the heat pump all the way here to the valve, all the way to this T right here. Because this T right here splits to underfloor heating downstairs and to radiators. Now that pipe will only now carry 4.2 kilowatts. So we have to calculate pressure loss for 4.2 kilowatts going to the manifold. And then at the manifold level, we have to calculate the highest resistance, one single loop on the manifold. And that way we get our index circuit on this property. Sometimes it could be a radiator, but in most cases, in my experience, uh, it's underfloor heating. The pressure loss of this index circuit here on this job at 7.44 kilowatts is 42 kilopascals. And the pump head available in our unit is 40 kilopascals. How do we know that? We check what's called a pump curve. We'll find the pump curve in the manual uh, for your pump or for your uh, heat pump. If the heat pump has one built in, it's gonna be in the heat pump uh, manual. If it doesn't, then you have to check the pump chart of your circulator that you are using on the job, or that will also allows you to choose a suitable circulator for your job. But you need to calculate your index circuit to know that. And if you look at this graph here, and you put a straight line, vertical straight line on our flow, then you'll see it will meet the curve of the pump, take a horizontal line, and you'll see what head you have available, and we've got 40 kilopascals. Now, it needs to overcome 42, but even if it was 40, I would still be upgrading existing pipe work because I don't want my circulator to run 100% uh, power at the design uh, conditions, simply because it's gonna consume way more power than it would have done otherwise if we did upgrade pipe work. That power would affect scope in a negative way. So we want nice low resistance pipe work. That circulator in the unit outside will be easily able to overcome the resistance of the system provide correct flow without having to use any buffers on this large house. The other way, lazy way of doing this job would be not to calculate anything and just put a buffer and put additional pump here. More equipment, higher cost of installation, and again, lower overall efficiency of this setup. That's my primary pipe work going to the heat pump and also upgraded pipe work there for radiators. This is pre-insulated MLCP, uh, 25 mil. 
that's my radiator pipe work float right there return right here and then it goes to this mlcp pipe work going both ways and this way you've seen one way and that's the other way where it uh, continues to the other end of the property the pump in the external unit has around four meters head of h2o available or 40 kilopascals now we have to make sure that our system resistance is not higher than that but how do we measure it how do we find where that resistance is this is where the concept of an index circuit comes in so Imagine that we've got on this system under for heating downstairs, so the pipe work will come from the loft all the way down to the manifolds. We also have radiators, so a bit shorter pipe work going to radiators on the first floor. The index circuit is going to be a circuit that has the highest pressure loss. So instinctively you would think it's going to be the furthest radiator or the longest under for heating loop, and usually it is. However, uh, the pressure loss is also related to the amount of flow going through that circuit. So if you have a very, very far radiator that's very tiny, very small heat loss, it may require not a lot of flow. So it might not be the index circuit. Sometimes the index circuit could be the nearest radiator to, uh, to the pipe work, but it's just so big that it requires tons of flow and the pressure loss to that radiator is huge. Once you find your index circuit, you have to calculate the pressure loss of that circuit. And the way I do it, I draw my pipe work on top of the plants. If the plants are not available, I take my iPad with a LiDAR sensor, I draw the plants myself, I mark where the radiators are, I draw the pipe work, and then I work out the index circuit. Just finishing off the external unit. What's left to do is just a little bit of pipe work. So we've got two isolating valves on the back of the unit, then two antifreeze valves. Uh, we hear that Valen gets a bit unhappy about a single antifreeze valve that we used to install, so we're putting two to keep them happy, while Nibi and Wiesmann require zero antifreeze valves or zero glycol, which is probably the way to go. And now it's time to commission the unit and prove that my calculations were in fact correct. So what I've done, I forced the unit on heating. It's quite warm outside, so I had to go on the thermostat and bump it up to 30 degrees. I go to the controls and I can see that I'm getting correct flow rate of 1200 liters. I also can force the uh, circulator in the unit to maximum. And when I did that, I was getting 1300 liters through the system. And we have here uh, manifolds, just pipe work connected to manifolds, no blending valves, no pumps. We don't need any of, of those items on heat pumps because they already supply uh, low temperature heating, so there's no need for blending down. You can see that we are getting some flow, roughly about one liter uh, per minute, some of them 1.2, 1.5. And we have one loop covering on average about 15 square meters, so that's about 450 watts of heat loss. And on a heat pump, we need a flow of around 1.2 liters per minute. And we pretty much, pretty much are getting exactly that. So we're getting correct flow here. And the way we're gonna be able to confirm the performance of this setup is by using open energy monitor. We've got a Sontex here, which is a flow and heat meter. So it measures the flow going through the return pipe or going to back to the external unit. It also measures the temperature of uh, return pipe work and also has a probe on the flow. On top of that, we've got a mid meter inside the fuse board that measures all the electrical energy that's being consumed by the whole system. And that includes everything. That includes controls, that includes uh, pumps, because the pump is an external unit. All this data is accessible to anyone, so we can see how this very system performs. Just go to the link below in the description and have a look for yourself. Chris Chapman, Heat Geek, Custom Renewables, Heat Geek, Alton and Jones, Heat Geek, Damon Blakemore, Heat Geek, all those guys use the concepts that I've described in this video. I only gave you a quick overview of what the concepts are. To master them, you need to find resources. And let me tell you, you will not find them in your regular college. You will not find it on your level three heat pump training. I don't think you will find it anywhere else these days apart for Heat Geek and Kimbo. Those are the only two resources 
that teach hydronics the way that I describe and the way that I see has results in the real world.